say you get a customer that comes in for the first time and then you just blow their mind with this package. Now all of a sudden they're a fan. Something that's super tangible like that when they've already pulled their credit card out and they're buying something, that is such a great moment to be like, well, I actually care about you. And I think this is a huge advantage that independent artists have because you're able to customize your packages. You're able to go the extra mile. You are now listening to the Creative Juice Podcast brought to you by Entrepreneur.io. What's up, Indies? Welcome back to the Creative Juice Podcast. This is episode 253. I'm your host, Jack McCarthy. With me is my co-host, Mr. Ed Isola. Ed, what's up, dude? I'm excited to dive into today's discussion with you all about ways to get fans to love you, to take the next step. Well, that's what everybody wants, right? Everybody wants people to love them. No, I'm just kidding. But it is... Ex- <laughs> It is exciting and it's uh, it, it's something that's super important because as you talk about how do I build a career, I feel like a lot of artists I like that are long-term artists, they've had long careers, it's because their fans love them. And then the question becomes, well, why do these fans love these artists specifically? And as an artist myself, how do I make you know them love me? Not from some vain point of view, but from a like, I love doing this. I want to keep doing it. How do I make people care? Totally. Yeah. And I think it's something that a lot of artists struggle with. Something I hear a lot of is I've built up an audience of some kind somewhere and getting them to engage and care and take the next step is challenging. And I feel like I'm bottlenecked and I don't really know what to do. And I come from the stance of saying that oftentimes it's because fans don't know what step to take. So in this episode, we wanted to share some stories and a couple tricks that are really useful that you can employ in your own music business right now to help you get fans to first, you know, be totally surprised and excited and fall in love with you and take a next step with it. And there's a couple main areas, but two main areas that I want to touch on kind of to kick things off here. And they have to do with fulfillment and they have to do with email marketing. And the first one is, Things that you can do, tricks that you can pull in fulfillment to get your fans to love you. It's not very often that I get a package in the mail from an artist that I'm super, super stoked about. I mean, yes, I'm very excited to get my CD that I ordered, my vinyl that I ordered, my merch, whatever it might be. Usually I'm stoked about that. But the process of unboxing isn't often very exciting. And I don't know if I don't know if you feel the same way with uh, a lot of the bands and artists that you love, Ed, but I've never really been wowed by too many of my favorites outside of our agency and the entrepreneur community, really, uh, which is very, very interesting to me, not to throw shade at anybody or to, to lump on ego to the indies here. But I don't often find myself getting super wowed by packaging and uh, fulfillment as much as I do outside of music in brands. Actually, I made an Instagram reel not long ago where I was unboxing some supplements. It was uh, it was protein and it came in this amazing packaging and made me feel really good. And it was it was a just a beautiful, well-rounded, well-branded sort of unboxing experience that I won't forget. And brands are really good at this, but artists tend to struggle with it. And what's interesting is I have seen this work wonders when it comes to getting customers to take a next step with you. Well, it's it's a great place to start because if somebody's buying something from you, to me, that's like a really crucial moment for a couple of reasons. The first is that if you're running something like a free plus shipping handling funnel and you're using that as a way to, to get them in the door, and essentially what I'm saying is you're using this sales tactic as a way to get them aware of who you are or becoming a customer for the first time. To me, this is like the first place where you can really, really drive the relationship forward. And it's a big pivot moment because say you get a customer that comes in for the first time and then you just blow their mind with this package. Now all of a sudden they're a fan. And we talk a lot about, well, you can convert people from buying through, you know, I series and follow up series and all this kind of stuff. But like, like something that's super tangible like that when they've already pulled their credit card out and they're buying something, that is such a great moment to be like, well, I actually care about you. And I think this is a huge advantage that 
independent artists have because you're able to customize your packages. You're able to go the extra mile. Some of the bigger artists you work with, they probably don't have the first idea about what's going on with their fulfillment because they don't touch it. Their management handles it. And this is an area where big or small, if you do hone in on it and you really want to make this happen, it builds the relationship. And like Jack said, I don't really get any, if any music related merchandise that I buy, it's typically like, you know, if it's a vinyl, it comes in like a white vinyl thing. There's nothing cool about it. And so it's it's a big opportunity where the bar is, the threshold is so low to do something cool as well, that if you do the bare minimum here, you really are going to stand out and that's going to make you stand out to your fans. Yeah, well said. I mean, I think that's kind of a sad fact <laughs> or, or a sad reality, really. You know, I see the same thing. This is kind of where our favorite artists are missing in terms of both their store, their online presence, and most importantly, their, their experience that they have with their fans. And that's really what drives people to, to fall in love with you as an artist. And so, I mean, there's a few things that kind of come top of mind and, and some examples that we can share from the agency as well. But when it comes to your fulfillment, Imagine what it would be like if when a fan of yours orders a shirt or a vinyl on your store, with it, they get a postcard that has a handwritten note from you. I mean, that's really cool in and of itself and something that you can pull off relatively quickly on the fulfillment side, you know, just fill out a whole bunch all at once, fill in names when you need to, and you're good to go. That's tight, but you can take it a next step and give people a reason to do something more when they get their order. This works really well. I mean, something that we know works well in e-commerce online is after someone becomes a customer, bringing them back in with a thank you kind of discount works really well online in email marketing and text marketing. But you can take that same approach when it comes to the actual delivery of your product. And so you can give someone a thank you coupon card, discount code, postcard, whatever it might be, whatever you want to call it, you can deliver that with your package and be like, hey, I just wanted to say thank you the next time you want to come to the store and pick up XYZ things. And you could even highlight some cool new merch that you've added to the store. You could talk about future offers that you're planning. You can even like tease what's upcoming next and you can offer them a discount and you can be sure that some of your fans are one, going to be really excited about that and two, are going to take you up on it. So that's one way, you know, from a from a sales generation perspective that you can help fans to go the next level with you and have them excited in the process. But th- I think this goes even further, you know, beyond just sales and trying to make more money. It also can tap into just areas of experience that your fans might have. Let's say you want to, you know, get people more engaged with you online. You know, one thing that a lot of artists could do is if you're you know, super, super active on, let's say, Twitch or Instagram. Let's say you hang out live there with your fans a lot and you want to drive your customers to be more engaged there. You could include something with your fulfillment collateral that points them to that. Yeah, that that's a really cool idea because it's not just, I think that's an important thing to say because it's not just about like, oh, put a thank you discount in this package when people open it up and then they're going to go buy more. Like, obviously, the hope is that people grow to love you and support you and continue to pull their credit cards out every time you have a cool shirt that you're excited about or a new album or whatever. But, like, that doesn't have to be the way that you reach out to people. And I think that's a really, really good point. The way I kind of think about it is, like, as an artist, you have so many different touch points with your fans. And every interaction, in my mind, either helps you or... It keeps you where you are or it hurts you. If you're thinking about, okay, well, hey, I really want to build my email list or I really want to build my Instagram engagement there. What opportunities do I have? And so if I view it through that lens, it's like for Jack's example, hey, I have this, this person just bought a package. What can I do to get them over to my Instagram? And so sending them that package, it's like, is this going to hurt me? Is it going to keep me where I am or is it going to help me? And if you do nothing, it probably just keeps you where you are, right? And if you put a little bit of effort into it and you put this, what Jack's saying is like, hey, here's a pre-cut card to go to Instagram signed. Like that's going to help. And it's not going to be like this overnight home run shot unless you're just having massive quantities of volume through your store. But it's something where like 
you're treating each person as the individual. And that's kind of how I like to think about it when I talk about, hey, we're, is this helping the relationship? Is it hurting it? Or is it nobody cares? And thinking about that, but thinking about it as I feel towards my friends. And like, if I did this action for a friend or a family member, would this make them feel good? Would it hurt their feelings? Would they probably not notice? And to me, that is just kind of the the barometer of actions that I'm taking. And it's like, like I said, every little action you do or don't do is a touch to your fans. Or, you know, you put an Instagram card in the package post-purchase, and then they get an email from you about Instagram. Then they get a, a text message saying, hey, thank you. I'm, I'm debuting a new live song on Instagram. All of a sudden, these little touches have now created this goodwill with this fan. And they're going to be like, oh, maybe I should go check out the Instagram. And obviously... I'm thinking about it as like a one-to-one type thing. But if you have 5,000 people on all these different platforms, it's one to 5,000, but it feels personalized. Totally. Yeah. And I mean, worth saying here that we're using, you know, driving traffic to Instagram as an example, but people talk about, artists talk about wanting to grow their engagement and that can happen in a lot of different places. Here's another good example. I know that a lot of bands and artists have Patreons where they have membership sites that they've built. And that it can be a real slog to try and get people onto those. It can be really, really hard. Even if you have a bunch of customers, it can be challenging to convey enough value to get people onto those. But if you know you've got something really cool and you want to get people onto it, this sort of post-purchase fulfillment work that you can do to get people to take an action Membership is another area where you can really drive a lot of traffic. Something that one of our bands at IndieX is doing right now is they're running a free trial into their membership, uh, into a $5 tier, a $5 a month tier, but they're giving people 30 days for free. And so to make sure that they could capitalize on that, because they've got a lot of store traffic, they've got a lot of customers, and they've got people coming in every single day, something that they said was like, okay, we're going to continue to drive traffic to our membership site after the point of purchase by including a postcard with a QR code on it that gives people you know, free access to all the exclusive stuff that we've got in our membership for 30 days. And it's just going to say, in our membership, we've got XYZ things for free for you. We've got exclusive music. We've got exclusive covers. We've got behind the scenes look. We've got discounts and merch that you can't get anywhere else. And we want to give you access to it all for free. Come join our inner circle. And They've got a QR code on the postcard and that sends people over to the store. And that kind of thing works really well. It feels like a more personalized invite than if you were just getting an email about, you know, sign up for my Patreon or sign up for my membership or seeing a social post about it. It's like, hey, thank you first for being a customer. I hope you really love the package that you're getting. I'd love to give you more cool stuff. And so to show you how cool it is, here it is for free. That's a cool call to action that gets someone, one, feeling grateful that, you know, you're in their world and they're in yours, and then excited for an offer to take a next step with you. And I think it's really important to like, we're, we kind of jumped into the e-commerce as the like, here's an example, right? But the whole point of talking about this is like, how do you make people love you? How do you take somebody that doesn't know who you are? or just heard one song of yours and transform them into somebody who loves you. And I think everything we're getting at, whether it's the store, whether it's, you know, the Instagram engagement, I think we've got a couple ideas we're going to touch on here in a second regarding like email lists and socials and that kind of stuff. The core principle of how do I make somebody love me as an artist is to go the extra mile, but to kind of subvert what people think they're going to get and just give it a little bit more. I saw this really interesting comment about Ryan Johnson, the guy who did the Glass Onion Knives Out movies. And they're like, yeah, he, yep. they're like, he's the master of being like, here's what people think they want. And I'm going to give that to them, but here's how I'm going to twist it. So it's like what they want, but they didn't realize they wanted it in this manner. And obviously that's like a huge movie and that kind of stuff. But like, I thought that that mindset was really, really interesting as an artist because it's like, well, what do people think they want? They think that they just want their package, but here's how I'm going to change that. Like, oh, they think that they just want an email, but here's how how I'm going to change that. And so kind of, I I use that personally when I'm thinking about my question and the way I simplify that for myself is how am I going to make this cool? That's what I ask myself when we're doing anything. How do I make this cool for somebody? 
And that to me translates into how do you make somebody love you? I think that's a really interesting point and a good segue here because something that maybe a lot of people are thinking right now is like, I don't have a ton of customers. Maybe you don't even have a store, right? If you maybe, all right, let's say you don't have a store, you don't have customers. If you've got an email list, there's a way that you can pull on a similar thread here to get people to take action. Again, going back to kind of my central thesis that I mentioned at the beginning of this episode is that often fans don't know to take an action or to take a step or they don't have an option in front of them of of what they can be doing. And something that we use a lot at the agency for a lot of our clients that we do email marketing with is the installation of a super signature, which essentially is after your, you know, your sign off at the end of the email. So if you're saying like, talk to you soon, peace, Jack, you would include a PS section that has, instead of just one call to action, you give a few different opportunities for people to take a next step with you based on where they are in relationship with you. So for example, you might have a call to action in your super signature about your membership site. You might have a call to action about a cool opt-in experience that you've put together with behind the scenes content for your record that when people click it, they automatically get brought into a you know, an email series about it. You might send people to your Facebook group. You might send people over to your YouTube channel where they can check out your live streams or your content that you're dropping regularly. The idea here is to give people a few different actions that are well different, differentiated in the super signature that you send in every one of your emails. And we see this work all the time. It is such a powerful little trick that you can do in your own business to get people to be a little bit more engaged or take the next step. I know just last week, Andy Hunter at uh, at NDX, one of our account strategists, he mentioned that, I think it was last week, one day he got five new membership subscribers, wasn't even promoting their Patreon, had just sent out a nurturing email about the band's new single and immediately got five new signups. Those people were driven purely from the super signature, nothing else. Uh, it all coincided together, which is really cool. So that's just an, one example of how we've seen this work. Yeah. And again, like I, I think what, if you rewind for two minutes and listen to what Jack said, he's like, hey, here's the super signature. But you didn't say, oh, at the bottom of the super signature, just put, go stream my music, go buy my merchandise. You said, here's an action you can take. And it's cool because of this reason. Go to YouTube to see my live streams. You know, that kind of go to get my new album and the behind the scenes content. It's like giving people this, not only giving people a path to take, but it's giving them a reason to do it without saying like, here's why you'll care about this. But that's really, really important to kind of just highlight. And I think that that core principle, right? It comes back to the idea of how do I make this cool? And to me, that can be expanded wherever, right? If you're now listening and saying like, well, I don't even have an email list. Like all I have is my Instagram page. It's like, okay, well you can apply that idea to your Instagram page. Like how do you make your Instagram cool for people? Do you set up a secret live stream or a a private story that people can DM you to get on and they get access to early access to songs? Like that's just an idea off the top of my head, but you can think, how do I make this cool? How do I give them benefits? That's how you make people love you. Because if you do that and you do it consistently over years, that's what forms a relationship of like, oh, well, I was back with this artist when they only had an Instagram and I'm still on their private story, you know, or I'm still in their private Facebook group. Or, and it's like, those don't cost you anything. They're free, but they are super, super crucial to build that relationship and to start the understanding at, from a fan's perspective that as the artist, you're going to go above and beyond consistently time after time and that you keep that up. It's kind of not trains isn't the right word, right? But like it just teaches people like, oh, here's what I can expect from this relationship with this artist. Yeah, it, set, it sets expectations. That's the word. Good words from Jack. Yeah, I, I love that. And actually, you, you know, you bring up a really good point, Ed, about like Instagram. Let's Let's boil it down even a step further. Let's say you don't have an email list and you're not sending emails. This same kind of concept can work really well with like your LinkedIn bio, right? Rather than having a LinkedIn bio page that just has a bunch of stuff on it that no one would really intentionally even bother looking at, choose a few that are really intentionally geared towards taking people where you want them to go and give them some options of why they would want to go there. And you could even use the same kind of language, you know, in the super signature, a lot of times the the language is uh, in the PS section is something like, hey, 
you know, P.S., if you want to stay involved with me or if you want to keep in the loop with everything I'm doing or something like that, then here are three ways that we can stay in touch. And then you give them, you know, your three calls to action. You can do a similar kind of copy strategy on those LinkedIn bio pages or on whatever app or platform you're using to do it. Yeah. And so my kind of final thought around this is like how it extends to live shows. And I haven't actually done this, but this is just an idea I had about a week ago that I would love to hear if anybody ever tries it and let us know if it works. But I don't even know if I told Jack this. This is just an off the top idea that I thought was cool about how do you push people from a live show to one, care about new music and two, kind of join your email list, right? And so the idea I had was that like, if you have a new album coming out, burn a bootleg of that album and say that every single purchase of the merch stand gets a bootleg of this unreleased album. And then on the back of it, print a QR code that goes to your email list sign up and then give that out with, you know, any merchandise purchase. To me, it's like, well, that's cool, right? And that kind of creates a cool experience for people that I think ultimately leads them down this path of how do I, how do people love you? Well, you're doing something cool like that, you know? Just an idea for, for how it extends into live shows. I do think that's a cool idea. Free gifts at the merch stand of any kind. I mean, that one is particularly cool because it's like, yo, you're in like, you're in on the secret. <laughs> like you're in the secret society that's that's hearing the record before anybody else on this burn CD form. Actually, I remember a couple years ago, the band Brand New, they actually, ahead of their most recent record that they put out, if I'm remembering correctly, I think they actually mailed out it was either burned CD copies or like some kind of bootleg vinyl copy. I can't remember. I didn't get one in the mail clearly, but they sent them out to just random fans that they had contact info for. And people started getting these records in the mail, not knowing what they were, not even knowing that they were from the band. It was really interesting. Again, un, not necessarily tightly related to what we're talking about here, but you can see how this idea of kind of surprising, shocking, and delighting your fans in places where they may not expect it. And then in return, getting their excitement and getting them, you know, to kind of fall in love with the cool stuff that you do and seeing that you go above and beyond, like Ed mentioned, gets them to take an action. What that action is, you get to choose. Or in the case of giving them a few options, they get to choose based on, you know, how excited they are or or what stage of relationship they're in with you, which is pretty cool. So you can see how this sort of expands out beyond just these, you know, these e-commerce and online uh, entities and can move into tour marketing or even just the way that you release a record or you release a project or you release merch. There's so many, so many ways to do it. But these are two tricks that hopefully help you guys that honestly, they're so simple to employ. They really take not a lot of time. They're very, very affordable, especially, you know, when it comes to like the cost of goods of a bunch of postcards, it's like nothing. And when it comes to setting up a super signature on your email, it's just a little bit of thought process and then going to take the time to make sure that it's in all of your automations and in all of the campaigns that you're going to be sending. And it can be massively, massively effective. So I hope that you take those to heart. So yeah, hopefully with that, you guys can see how these tricks that we kind of explained with regards to your e-commerce fulfillment, with regards to email, then can go and expand out into other areas of engaging with your fans, whether it be live shows, whether it be social media, whatever it might be. You can take these two tricks, put them into your own music business today, see how they start to work. You will definitely see tangible, beneficial effects on the way that your fans go to the next stage with you, the way that they engage with you, and ultimately the way that they fall in love with you as a creative. And then you can take them and make them your own and put them into different places in your world. So I hope you guys take these ideas, learn from them, and use them starting today. So we'll see you guys next time on Creative Juice. Peace out, Peace. Go.